fled away. No place was found for them. I saw the dead, great, small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Also, another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged by what was written in the book, by what they had done. Verse 14 of Romans of Revelation chapter 20 says that death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. And if, verse 15, any man's name is not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Two things simultaneously that I hope will be generated in your mind, even as it was mine, as I began to think about preparing for this morning. One is, is your name written in the book of life? Or the Lamb's Book of Life. And secondly, if it is, what a tremendous storehouse of blessings that you have, I have, because of where my name is written. Now there are some places that your name can be written that would be kind of undesirable. <laughs> You may not like it. You may not want it. You may not prefer it. I know that when I was a young man, uh, we had a place out in West Texas that did have a little stream that ran through, and there was a highway bridge over it, and uh, we were walking around and looking, and I saw on the sides of, of the concrete embankments many, many names and seniors of certain certain date and uh, call so and so and so and so and I made a statement to the adult that I was with at the time you want me to write your name up there and her response was fools names and fools faces always appear in public places Folks, can you imagine a 16-year-old boy remembering that when he's 78 years old? There are some things and places that you don't want your name. One of them would be you don't want your name posted on the bulletin board at the post office. And how many of you would like to have your name removed from the robo sales solicitation list on your telephone. But there are some things and places that we'd like to have our name, and it is desirable. One of those places would be the list of neighbors that you have that includes you as a good neighbor. You'd like to be on their list. You'd like to be on the list of people that you call friends and you'd like to know that I'm on their list as a friend. A list of good workers. But, but I want to remind us and share with us that as we live and we walk the Christian life, the really important place for our name to be listed is in that book of life. Will you ever see that name? You know it's there by faith and by your actions for sure. In addition, in addition to the Lamb's Book of Life being the most important book of all, sometimes there are individuals that overlook that book and overlook the name, absenteeism of the name. This new book will do, and the name therein will have a great deal to do with our 
final destiny. The book will determine our eternal welfare. Job said it well. I like the thought that he shared with us in the book of Job in chapter 16 and verse 19. Even now, Job said, he was talking to those that were his friends that were saying, Job, what would you do wrong? Wherein you must have, of all these bad things, must would not be coming your way. Job, one of his responses was, even now, behold, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. Boy, isn't that true with all of us? You worry about doing good things and what you do and you do it in secret and no one else knows about it. Let me tell you, let me remind me too, your good deeds are stored up. We talk about it, stars in your crown, but heaven talks about it, those deeds being placed within the book that was open, or the books that were open, including the book of life. Let me talk a little about that book of life for just a moment or two this morning, and I respect your time. Uh, I, I understand that there are the other characters in the Old and New Testament that knew about and thought about and addressed this book of life. Jesus referred to it in the book of John chapter 14. Uh, but also one of the things that I know early on in the Old Testament is Moses, God's chosen prophet of the age. Moses, when he had been called up by God to receive the Ten Commandments, and he received the tablets, the stones, and God had written on them on both sides of the stones. Both sides. But God could see something from his vantage point that Moses couldn't see at that point. God could look from his vantage point and he looked down below to all of his masses of people, his chosen people, the people that he was leading out of bondage and leading toward the promised land. And they were frolicking. And they were dancing. And they were singing and they were celebrating and God's anger fumed. You can read about this in the book of Exodus in chapter 32. The whole chapter, I'm not going to take time to read that, but I excerpt I will read. God was so angry and Moses knew it because God expressed it. Moses pled the case. He said, don't destroy the people that you have just set to freedom. Well, Moses went down. He saw what was happening. He heard what was happening. And his anger, like that of the father, his anger began to swell. And the nearer he came to seeing what the people, God's people, were doing, the angrier he became. He cast down the stones, the ones that had God's commandments on the front by God's finger and the commands of God on the back. He threw them down and they broke. They broke. Moses was so angry. He went down, he took up the golden gate, he ground it up into fine pieces uh, of metal. He poured it in the water and he made the people drink that contaminated water. He was angry. The next day, the next day he went back and talked to God. And he said to God, don't destroy these people. If you destroy them, 
destroy me. And the Lord said to Moses on that day, verse 33, whoever has sinned, whoever sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Moses was familiar with the term. David was familiar with the term. He poured out his heart because his enemies were not the warring people and tribes. They too. But he knew God was with them and they would overcome. But what he was talking about in the book of Psalms in chapter 69, the entire chapter was about the people that were his kindred People that needed to respect and he wanted their respect and he wanted their love and he wanted their devotion, but they were doing everything in the world to destroy him and he was talking to God about it. And guess what? David's anger came out in the words in verse 30 and verse 28. He said, Lord, let them be blotted out of the book of the living. Let them not be enrolled among the righteous. He's not talking about enemy nations. He's talking about his brethren that couldn't love one another and didn't appreciate him. Paul wrote about his fellow laborers in the book of Philippians in chapter 4, verses 2, 3. He talked about uh, Eurodia, he talked about Sintachi, the difficulties that they had, the personality, I guess. I don't know what the reason was. But anyway, they had helped Paul, and he loved them, and he wanted them to love each other. And he asked the brethren, including Clement and the other fellow workers, he said, I help these people. Their names are written in the book of life don't let it be erased I added the last phrase not in the text on that day when all will stand before God to be judged there will be no juggling of the books they will not be going back and racing and rewriting There'll be no manipulation of accounts to cover for our mistakes. Revelation 20, verse 12. The books were opened. Also another book was opened, which is the book of life. One set of books in heavenly places records what we have done. But there's another book, another listing, a listing of the saved. And it's called, in text, the book of life. There are blessings, and I want to spend what little time we have remaining, uh, what time I've chosen in remaining. There are blessings, both temporal and eternal blessings promised to those of you and us that have our names written in that book of life. I like that idea. I never see my name written. I don't know what how God writes names with his fingers on rock and stone or in a book. But God knows who I am. He knows who you are, and he knows who you were even before you were born, the psalmist says in his Psalm 139. I like to think about it, some of the blessings. I mentioned a moment ago in John 14 when Jesus said, among other things, I go and I prepare a place for you. For who? 
for the people whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. I go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again. I'll take you unto myself. Where I am, you can be also. John wrote it this way in Revelation 3 and 5. He who conquers, he'll be clad thus in a white garment. I will not blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Can you imagine? Last Sunday, Cliff preached about, can you imagine? And we miss him today. And we pray for him. And we pray for Brenda and several, several others. But can you imagine what it would be like to have Jesus say, this is Richard. He turned to the angels and he would say to the angels, the host of messengers, this was Richard or Cliff. And he was one of our messengers on earth. Like you are a messenger from heaven to earth. The Apostle Paul penned the book of Romans in chapter, in fact, the whole book. But I'm especially reminded of chapter 8. There's 39 verses in that. We again not take time to read near all of that, but I will. I do want to allude to the fact that there are some blessings to having your name. It's important, and you're blessed. And I'm blessed, and it's important to me to know that my name is written there and there are some benefits now and in the eternity. One of those things, one of those blessings early on mentioned, I'll not mention them all, but one of those in verse 11 of Romans 8 is the fact that when you die, you're not going to stay dead. The promise, but if your name is written in that book, there's going to be a resurrection for you, a resurrection for life. I like to think about that. One of the things that I maybe hesitate and I put off as long as I can, and I think many of you are joining me in this, and that is putting off death as long as we can. We spend dollars and we spend time and we eat pills <laughs> that your wife gives you, man so that you can live and be healthy. If the Spirit, the text says, verse 11, if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also. And I inserted if your name is written in the book of life. Think about it. Resurrection. But there's another heir, another thing, and it's heirship. If your name is written in that book, that means you are a son or you are a daughter to the king to the most holy God, the Father of all mankind. All who are led by the Spirit of God, in verse 14, all who are led uh, by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Think about that. Dream about it. The Son of God. A child of the king. So when we cry, Abba, Father, verse 15, it is the Spirit Himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we're children, you inherit what the Father has for you. If we're children. 
if our names are written in the book of life. Verse 17, if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided that we suffer with him in order that we might be glorified with him. And talking about glorification in verse 18, one of the things that we enjoy because our name is in that book of life is future glory. God is glorified. Jesus is glorified. They're in heavenly places, and so shall we be. I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us, verse 18 says. There's something else that you have, and I have. That's why I want to make sure my name is in that book. And I can make sure by faith, by comparing my life to the pattern that he has demonstrated, that that additional thing is called hope. That's number four on my list. We have hope. Hope. We hope for what we do not see. We wait for it with patience. We know it's coming. I like it. Verse 25. Not wish. Now, there is a difference between wishing and hope. Hope that is seen is not hope. You got it. But some of these things that we talk about that we enjoy in the after a while, that's our hope. And number six, the favorite, I guess, the longest that I can remember, one of my favorite verses of Scripture, verse 28. If your name is there, you have, you're reassured. Doesn't make any difference what comes your way. Doesn't make any difference what happens to you. It doesn't make any difference what comes through your mind and you try to move it out and you do move it out and you say, God, help me to get rid of that thought. There is this thing called reassurance. Everything is going to be okay. We've been fighting a disease for over a year. Uh, problems. Boy, we need reassurance. And verse 28 gives it. We know that in everything, God works for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. In the grand finale, at least in this lesson, the grand finale of blessings that are promised to those who have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life is God loves us. That's the blessing now and in eternity. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Can tribulation? Can distress? What about persecution or famine? What about nakedness? Our peril? Our soul? Paul said in the book of Romans in chapter 8, verse 38, I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor oh, what a list, nor anything else in all of creation shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If it were possible, I'd have Andrew to lead a song. I'm sure he knows it, and I'm sure you know it. But the song isn't in our book. It is in our previous book. Do you remember it? My name 
is in the book of life. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I rise above all doubt and strife and read my title clear. My name once stood with sinners lost and bore a painful record. But by his blood, the Savior crossed and placed it on his road. While others uh, climb through worldly strife to carve a name of honor, high up in heaven's book of life, my name is written there. I close with a thought. I simply do this, the negative part, to cause you to look and cause me to think, to compare. Revelation 20 and verse 15, we've already alluded to. And that is, if our name is not there, if it isn't there, or if it was there and it was removed from there, do what you have to do to get it back. You're missing too much now and in eternity. If anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he's thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -mm -mm. Heaven is a beautiful place, a prepared place for a prepared people. The time of preparation is the here and the now. Whether you're alive and sitting there and listening, or whether you're home listening, is your name in the book of life. The text says in the, again from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, this time, nothing unclean shall enter, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Can you be sure your name is there? If you've heard the gospel lesson today or other times, and you know, you, you've heard it, you understand it, you believe it, and you're touched in heart. The text says in the book of Acts in chapter 2, they were cut to the heart. What shall we do? That depends on where you are spiritually. If you've not ever obeyed the gospel and you know you ought, your heart demands it. Don't put it off. Get your soul in order and let God write your name in his Lamb's book of life. If it has been there, you have been immersed. You have been born into the family of God. But for whatever reason, you have wandered away. Or maybe you're still wondering, but you've thought about it for the last 15, 20 minutes. Whether you're home or present, determine today is a day of change. God, forgive me as a child. Others can pray with you and for you. If you need to respond to heaven's invitation, Make sure your name is on the Lamb's Book of Life. We invite you to come and present and sing.
We do have services planned for tonight at 6 o'clock, and uh, we do invite you to come back. Uh, our subject tonight, a little unusual, but the uh, topic is uh, carry a little honey. And that's not a baby either, Martha. Carry a little honey. That's out of the text in the book of Exodus. No. Genesis chapter 43. Will the one who is to dismiss us please do so? If you pray with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for our worship service this morning. We're thankful for Brother Richard and the lessons he brought to us. We, we pray you be with him, with Claire and Brian, as they both come to search the scriptures to bring us our lessons, Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for the needless killing that's going on in our country. Innocent men and women and children are dying. We ask for your help on this and for your guidance. We ask you to be with Miss, Miss, Mrs. Walker, the loss of her husband. And we pray that she turn to you, Lord. We ask that you be with us in time of need and be with those that are in need. And we ask you to constantly guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 